Welcome to the Northwest Brim Football Show. I'm the head coach, Josh Robinson, and what is our last um, football show of the 2019 football season. Uh, this past Friday, we took on Oconee County High School down in uh, Watkinsville, just south of Athens, Georgia, uh, and, and came away with a loss. We faced a really good football team. They were the number one seed, uh, very physical. Coach Nolan's been there. Uh, I believe this is his ninth year. I want to say he was at Stevens County in, in, in Georgia before that and was a very accomplished guy. Um, you know, it, we went in knowing that it was going to be a difficult game, but I was really proud of the way our guys played, uh, especially after the disappointing loss in which we didn't achieve the region championship that we so desired. Uh, to go in there and kind of suck it up and play, uh, it was 21-7 at halftime, and we felt like if we got a stop, got the ball back, and, and drove the field and maybe got a score, we'd be back in the game, and we did both of those things except we got down and, and had a chance to uh, – complete a pass inside the five-yard line and, and would have pulled us possibly within 21 to 14. Um, but, you know, woulda, coulda, shoulda is kind of always uh, something that coaches need to avoid. And uh, But nonetheless, I was very proud of our guys on this particular night. They ended up taking about 14 plays to score, and our defense could have went out there after we um, didn't complete the third down conversion and then we missed a field goal. Um, we could have went out there and really laid it down and let them just run all over us. But we fought. They went on like a 12 or 13 play drive to go up 27 to 7 uh, in, in the game. And then we got the ball back and picked up a couple of first downs after some bad field position. And we got to fourth downs, fourth and two. Uh, you know, and, and I've told our kids all year we're not going to give up. We're going to try to win every single game, no matter the situation. And I believe there was about a minute and a half left. Uh, and I decided to go for it on our on fourth down on our own 30. Um, and I would do it again 100 times over because if we're going to win the football game, we have to get a first down and maintain the ball there. Unfortunately, we didn't, and they ended up scoring. You know, they've got a couple of Division One kids. Uh, a lot of you would recognize the name Brad Johnson. His son is the quarterback. Um, he was a quarterback in the NFL for, I believe, 12 years for, like, the Vikings. He won a Super Bowl. Uh, with the Tampa Bay Bucks, So they have some good players. They're going to have a great chance to go on and win next week, and I wish Coach Nolan all the best. Um, but I really want to talk about our guys. They, they went in with a defense that had hardly allowed any points and any yards all year long. We ended up uh, accumulating around 300 yards of offense, and this is not just in mop-up duty. We passed for 180 yards. Um, we rushed for around 50 to 70 yards um, while the game was still in doubt, and we picked up about 50 or 60 late uh, um, as, as we both started to sub. So, uh, you know, our guys fought, fought the whole time. We knew it was going to be a physical game. They were much larger than us up front, had a 6'6 receiver, all these kind of things. But our defensive guys did it as they've done all year. Our secondary got was beat up going into the game, and by the end of the first quarter, they were basically all of them were limping with some sort of back issue, hand, wrist, hamstring, uh, you know. And I'm just proud of our guys for the fight that they put up on this particular night. We unfortunately came in uh, on the short end. Um, but the thing is, is our guys went out the right way. They played hard. And they didn't finish with personal fouls, late hits, and all those kind of things that it's sometimes a danger for a coach that is coaching seniors in their last game because you're frustrated. Yet all of a sudden that realization of it being at the end kind of sets in and maybe you do things that are out of character. This group did not do that. Um, you know, we have a wonderful group of seniors that we're going to talk about later and I'm so thankful for them uh, leading our team. We have young guys that contributed very heavily on Friday night. We have even more young and inexperienced guys that are going to contribute next year. But we are a, you, most teams in the state of Georgia are going to go as far as their seniors took us or take them, and our seniors took us a long way, and I'm very proud of them. At this time, let's look, take a look at the highlights. Um, we have started the game on defense, and here Owen does a great job of finding the second window, one of their best players SEC offers there, number seven. We complete the ball, uh, end up getting a couple of first downs, uh, end up getting in there on a fumble. Chase Humble recovers the fumble there at midfield. We come back out on offense, and we do a good job on third down going. You know, this is Owen's progression. He's he's went from being a one-rig guy to a multiple-rig guy as, as he's gained um, 
experience. There you see our O-line doing a great job. They're jumping off sides. We're driving the ball home at 7 nothing at this time. Great throw to Preston Neely, who came on and had a really good year for us. And then we end up scoring. We run the ball right at them and picked up as many rushing yards as the last two teams combined had on them during their regular season uh, by the time uh, it got to the end of the game. There, the, the kick by Yahir Zapata. Uh, we end up trying to kick an onside kick. It ends up working exactly how we want it to. It ricochets back, and I believe that's Keith McQuaig who recovered the onside kick. Then we're running the ball again. Our guys doing a good job up front. Those front guys are loaded with seniors with Jeb Brooker, Reed Chow, and Case and Kittle being our seniors. Then Harrison Kiker, uh, Dayton Cowart, and uh, Jacob Harden coming in and, and being our underclassmen. We end up getting a good kick by um, Matthew Redman there. Uh, and we end up getting a stop, and our guys just fought the whole time. Here, you know, Jordan McCamish, who's one of the better players, in my opinion, should have won Defensive Player of the Year in, in our region. Here, Zach Coslow, and he does a good job stopping them. And there you see Matthew Redman coming up, being, being that leader that we're going to need him uh, to be in the future. Here, uh, he kind of ends up missing a tackle, but slows him down. And you can see our guys fight at this time. It's 14-7, uh, and our guys are still playing hard. They were throwing play action. Great job by Callan Neely. Again, the really big prospect there for them with the SEC offers and in the junior. That's a young man. We end up making them off sides. Callan Neely with the catch. Here, Gavin Ellis on the run, who had an outstanding year for us, who probably struggled early in our program, and we are as proud of him, uh, you know, as as we could be. Here's an unbelievable interception by Matthew Redman of the uh, LSU committed quarterback uh, in, in Max Johnson for them. We get the ball back uh, on offense here. Owen Brooker, I believe, was like 19 for 30 or so on the night, which is really good for a freshman in these kind of situations. And our receivers did an outstanding job. There's another catch by Cooper Pardee. We're so thankful he came out, played such an important role to our football team uh, on both sides of the ball. And we wish him the best of luck in basketball. And I believe he's going to be a better basketball player for what he achieved. There's Bryce Mantooth, another one of our seniors. Here we're trying to fake a punt. We don't hear the call. Matthew Redman being Matthew Redman does an unbelievable job and gets a, a great punt off in a bad situation and gets the ball down uh, to the 20 yard line. So again, Matthew being that smart player that, that we expect out of him, Jake Fawcett, uh, Jordan McCamish and Zach Coslow in on the tackle. Uh, here's Damon Banta who came on for unfortunately Colby Ramsey and Bailey McQuaig, two of our seniors could not play this game due to injuries. Um, Getting stops right there, Jake Fawcett and Damon Banta, two juniors that we'll be counting on on defense next year, getting some valuable playing experience. And Damon Banta played great, and Jake got better as the game went. Uh, you know, and here we are uh, with Chase Humble getting a sack. We get some pressure. They've not really been pressured this year, so we're doing things to them at the time. It's still 14-7. to 7. We're doing things to them that they're kind of not used to having happen, uh, being such a quality football team. We end up stalling there, punting the ball away uh, in you know, a host of Bruins, just the way it's been all year. Our guys playing the game the right way. That's the reason I love this group so much, and, and I hope our other guys saw this. They're on the defense again, Cooper Pardee. We've already talked about him uh, being involved on the run. Good job by Damon. And Banta. Um, there's Dakota Hickman in on the tackle. I believe we saw Jeb Brooker there. Uh, there's a catch by Matthew Redman. Just a, you know, he's not the biggest guy in the world, but he's one of the toughest uh, on a football field on any given Friday night. Uh, there's a great catch for a first down. I'm, I can't really see, but I believe that was Ethan Inslee. There's Dayton Coward on the trap block, needs to keep going. Uh, but we end up uh, picking up a first down. We're driving the ball on them. Uh, we end up completing, I believe this is the third quarter at this point, picking up the first down to make it 30. Uh, it's 21 to 7 at the time, picking up a, a big game with Bryce Mantooth. We end up stalling out there. They come back, and here you can see. You know, again, it's 21-7, and our guys are just fighting their rear ends off against a big physical football team. You know, nine of our guys are in there on a tackle. They're running – they're even going to the point to where they're having to run plays that are different than their typical desire and what they want uh, out of our guys. We're spinning out. We're making tackles, giving up more yardage than what we want. Don't get me wrong. But our guys are playing physical. Logan Akins, love the kid. Had a very good night for us. Um, we're having to sub at this point. I believe Damon Banton is out hurt. Uh, we've got Jaden Santiago in because we had some uh, bangs and bumps. 
here, this is something that Owen's got to do going forward. Takes a big hit. We don't want that, but we want him to be able to scramble. And he started to learn that as the year went. Um, and, and again, we're still fighting in a bad situation. End up missing a tackle, but our guys are flying around. You know, again, I can't say enough. And people would say, well, coach, they're moving the ball on you. They're, they're scoring. They're getting down the goal line. I'm telling you, I'm proud of our guys for fighting. They held us there, and you can just see the, uh, flying around. And, I, I, you know, I hope you can sense the – the joy I see in watching our kids play this way, uh, playing hard. Jacob Sanders in on the tackle. Jake Fawcett, uh, there's Jake Fawcett again. Bryson Cox, one of our seniors, went in there and done an outstanding job for us uh, in, in limited playing time. Come back on offense, and again, we could have kind of laid it down, but our guys keep fighting, and we are able to execute, and they have a lot of starters still in there, and we're able to work the ball down the field and get a score. Here we're running the tunnel against Preston Neely. Uh, need to do a little better job with our guys guys blocking, um, but still picking up yardage, play action, great throw right in a tight window by Owen to Callan Neely, who played a great game for us, and it should as a senior. Uh, there, Preston Neely's picking up three or four tough yards for us. Uh, Cooper was coming free. That's really who we were trying to get the ball to. We kind of ran out of time. Noah Newman, thankful he got healthy and had an opportunity to contribute on this night. Wonderful kid, hard worker for us. There you can see Jeb Brooker and Kaysen Kittle and Reed Chadwick getting down the field. Uh, you know, I wish I could say all their names more. As those guys just did an outstanding job. Noah Newman with another catch and then a great job by Ethan Ensley who uh, catches a, a, what ends up being the final touchdown of the night for either team. We kind of give our seniors, as long as they act right and do right in a situation like this, uh, as to when they want to come out of the game, do they want to come out of the game. None of our guys wanted to come out. We kind of let them come out at the end one by one by one so we could kind of you know, congratulate them on the year as they came off. And here we end the season um, with a loss to Oconee County, but certainly a successful year for the Bruins. Uh, we'll be gunning for more success next year. Um, this season was an unbelievably um, fortunate season for us to see our guys kind of overcome and, and become a part of something that ended up being a, a really, really good group and a good, good football team. You know, again, it's not been many times in Northwest history we've had a chance to win a region championship game 10, and our guys found a way to do that. And I think back on the season, uh, and it's all started in spring practice. We're not sure who our quarterback's going to be, our running back, receivers. Like, we have so many questions. We have about seven guys back on defense that were starters, uh, eight that played at least part of the time, uh, give or take one or two. And we had to fill in some major roles. You know, we lost some really big names that, that people didn't think that we could replace. Uh, and I thought it would be really difficult. You know, there are no duplicates of past players, but at the same time, I felt like we could do it. And we, we fight through spring practice, have a good one, end up against Murray County, who was much improved as their records show this year from 0 and 10, so I believe 4 and 6 and 5 and 5. And we beat them with our starters, I believe, like 13. To tw or 20 to nothing um, at spring practice. Kind of unsure in that game what we were going to do offensively. We go through the summer, have a really good summer, good attendance, good work ethic, and that's really the basis for everything. Our seniors really did a good job. We had very few guys in our entire football program that didn't show up and do the things that we asked them to. And then those guys that didn't really didn't survive as it goes through. And that's kind of typical of any football coach that talks about their football program and what went on. Uh, you know, when we start the season with a win and kind of sloppy conditions against Cahola, we go the next week against Dalton and, and play bad against a very good team with an unbelievable player uh, and, and really end up uh, on, a, on a very, very disappointing fashion. And at that point, our guys could have kind of hung it up. We came back against Stone Mountain, who was drastically improved. Again, their record showed that. Um, and, and they got tremendously better, uh, but we were able to win, really, and it wasn't that close. I believe it was 31 to 12, and we took our starters out, and they scored late in the fourth quarter, and our backups got to play. Um, and then, really, the defining moment of our season where I knew that we could – we could really have a chance in this region was against Temple High School, one of the best running backs in the state. He was second at the time in yardage, and he just found a way uh, to, to get yards and keep them in, took them to the playoffs first time, and we really controlled the game and won. And then we traveled through region schedule, and we beat Ridgeland in, in a great comeback. 
we win a couple of games and then we go to Pickens and kind of play like that inexperienced team we were worried about all year. Guys, again, could have hung it up, but they didn't. They decided, let's get better. And we come back and win the next couple of games in, in convincing fashion. Uh, it set for Gilmer on a terrible night, but we, we were able to beat a much improved team six to nothing. Uh, didn't allow them hardly any yards after they came in averaging close to 250, 275 yards. Uh, and then we ended up moving forward and, and going to the Heritage game in Oconee. Um, so overall, just a, a, a really good year, and I'm very proud of our seniors and our entire group for persevering. At this time, let's take a look at our corporate sponsors. <laughs> Welcome back to the Northwest Bruin Football Show. I'm the head coach, Josh Robinson, and what is unfortunately the last segment of the 2019 Bruin Football Show. Um, uh, I want to start this session um, talking about uh, next year uh, in, in, in our schedule. We are opening with Cahoe Creek, and we're able to play some other teams, local teams, that'll be the first meeting ever. We're going to be playing North Murray this coming year. Um, I, I'm not sure we've played Chattooga in, in a very long time. I know we scrimmaged them early in my career here. Um, we'll be playing them. Uh, we are fortunately able to play Southeast again. It's going to be later in the year as if they were playing a region schedule, even though they're not. And we'll also be playing Gordon Central. So that's our non-region games. Um, our region games, we get two new um, teams to our region that we're kind of unfamiliar with. Central of Carrollton, you know, some people get that confused with Carrollton, different uh, programs, whatever. Um, still, still good athletes and has been in a tough region. Um, and, and really, it's really interesting. We had our region coaches meeting this past week and uh, uh, almost every one of us were losing between 14 to 18 starters. Uh, and that is the case with Central Carroll. Um, Cedartown is losing 16 starters. They will also be on our schedule. And then some familiar opponents with Ridgeland, Heritage, uh, and, and Pickens County. So we're all going to be in there. It's going to be a very competitive region um, and something definitely that we're going to have to work in order to maintain our, our playoff appearance streak. Um, we have made the playoffs for five consecutive years, which is a really big deal. Um, we have, and six out of seven as well. First time in school history for both of those items. We also have one of the longest playoff streaks up in this area. Um, and so those are some things to be really proud about that our seniors should be proud about. Um, but that's kind of enough about next year. I wanted to mention those things. I, I know there are some of you out there that would be interested in that. Um, but the big point is, is we want to talk about this year's team and all that we accomplished. And I'm going to kind of go through a list. Um, you know, I, unfortunately, I think I'm always destined to maybe leave somebody out completely unintentional. Um, but there's so many people to think that, that make all of this come together. Uh, you know, it takes a village, and, and we love our kids the most. They're the most important part. They're more important than me. They're more important than my assistant coaches. Um, but, but we want to try to recognize as many as we can. I'm going to start out with my wife and my children. Um, they don't um, get to see me very much. I try to spend as much time with them as I can. Uh, again, at the region coaches' meetings, I told the other coaches I introduced myself to them uh, on Saturday morning when everything uh, was kind of over, and unfortunately, uh, you know, the season is over, but at the same time, getting to spend time with them is going to be enjoyable. Um, and I definitely couldn't do it without my wife. She's been in unbelievable 
throughout the process of the last 17 years of my life, especially the last nine as the head football coach. Uh, my coaches, I love my coaching staff. I, I believe these guys did an a, a awesome job uh, this year. There are definitely things that we can improve on, and that starts with me. Uh, but it, we, we have a great camaraderie. Like, we really get along. We're a group. Uh, and, and that's kind of rare to a certain degree that you don't have a lot of conflicts. And really, I have to say, this year we didn't have any. As you got grown men and we're all competitive, we're all wanting to win. Um, there was never any time where there was a push and a shove about what we were doing and how we were trying to do it. Pulling in the same direction is so important, and I'm very, very uh, thankful for my coaches. I also have to thank their wives and their children. No, it's not just mine that's, that, you know, I guess you could say suffers during football season for a lack of attention. That some of these guys are newly married, and they're out here spending all this time, and they're spending more time with other people's children than they are their own children, other people's children than they are their wives. And it's a gigantic sacrifice for everybody, and I just want to say thank you to them. Uh, the quarterback club does a tremendous amount here. Um, we have a very large budget, and we get a lot for our guys. We bought new uniforms this year. Um, there, were, there were just a lot of things that we accomplished that we couldn't do without them. Um, our, our president, Mr. Akins, has done an outstanding job uh, of leading us and kind of getting everything together. Uh, our Super Bruin is led by Mr. Neely. He is uh, uh, top of the line when it comes to that. We're re definitely going to miss him and have to get somebody in place um, as his younger son becomes a senior next year. Um, uh, he's our corporate guy. Our Super Bruin is uh, Miss Inslee, another senior parent. We're really going to miss her. She was really spot on and graciously she's agreed to stay on for our next individual that's going to run it. Our hospitality by Miss Nicholson and her husband uh, did a great job for us. It, they, that's probably the most trying job because of all the alignments of meals, pregame, postgame. Uh, what are we going to do? Where are we going to eat when we're on the road? What are we going to have on the way back? And we just really appreciate that. Our uh, treasurer, Mr. Kittle, has done a, a great job. A lot of bills to pay as we're starting to buy these things for our guys. So we definitely appreciate all those people and all the other individuals that are involved. Our chain crew uh, on Friday nights. Uh, Mr. Maynard is kind of like a coach for us. He's a guy behind this TV show. Um, we definitely appreciate all that he does as far as being involved with our huddle. Um, our underclassmen organization groups, really good. Uh, our trainer, we got a new trainer this year. Um, Lauren is unbelievable uh, for our football program. We're so thankful to have her. Our managers, we had uh, a handful of managers did an outstanding job. We definitely want to mention our senior, uh, Chloe Price. She has uh, really came on in, in one of the few years she's done this and was really top of the line. And that's so beneficial for, for us coaches to not have to worry about those side things that do play an important role. Water, getting things set up, getting the locker room open, all those kind of things at halftime of games that uh, really frees us up to worry about coaching more than anything else. Uh, we have a film crew that unfortunately has three seniors involved in it, Lucas Trammell, uh, Caleb Lunsford, and Desiree Dyer. We really appreciate all those guys putting in tons of work, sideline, putting together videos. Again, they work in conjunction with Mr. Maynard, who has been wonderful for, for our football program, and they, we're really going to miss these. It's going to be hard to replace them uh, to find somebody that does as good a job as them. Um, also, got to think, we talked about our budget and quarterback club, but our corporate sponsor it is so incredibly important that everybody gets out there and supports these local high schools. That's where your business comes from. You know, even if you're a, a Northwest person, you know, to support Cahola Creek because there's Cahola Creek people coming to your um, uh, business, but even more so brewing people that are coming to yours and to get out there. We have such great sponsors. You know, Dan Peoples, one of our top ones. Uh, he has a lot of a lot of uh, uh, time on here because of the amount of money he donates us. Um, but, but he's not the only one. We have a tremendous group of people. We have to continue that in order to keep our football program where it's at and moving forward as far as growth goes. Um, Katie Sanders is our athletic secretary. She organizes everything. She's worth a million dollars. She could never make as much money as what she's worth, and I, I greatly appreciate her. Um, our athletic director, our head athletic director is Brett Harper, assistant principal. He's very, very supportive of me. I keep those guys informed. Uh, they know that I care about the, the, the players the most, and we're able to work through any problems. They kind of give me the freedom to run the football program within reason how I want to. 
Um, our principal is top notch, as good as anybody around. Former football coach, under, but he's also coached basketball. He understands sports and what it takes to be successful. And I think sometimes it's kind of taken for granted uh, the things that he does for our football program, but not by myself and my coaching staff. We're unbelievably uh, appreciative of him. Um, lastly, and definitely not least, are our players. They're the best part. They're the reason I do this. Again, we've already mentioned the time spent away, the involvement uh, that, that goes into being around these kids. If we didn't have young people that I enjoyed to be around, it would make it really difficult to come in and go to work knowing I'm missing my kids, my wife, my assistants are missing their kids and wife. But it is not. We have a wonderful group of young men. Um, it is great to watch them grow. Our kind of theme for the season is a better husband, better father. That's what we're working for. Um, you know, we had a successful football season this year, making the playoffs again for the fifth consecutive time, uh, accomplishing the uh, opportunity to play in game 10 for region championships, only been done a handful of times. But the real measure of our success, and I would say this if we we're 0 10 or 10 and 0, we're going to find out down the road. These young men have grown, become better people, but we want to see them be better husbands and better fathers. So that's definitely something um, that, that we're working towards, that these young men work towards. Our young group has big shoes to fill. We have some unbelievable seniors that we're going to, I'm going to say their name in, in numerical order in just a moment. Um, the, our senior group, I can't say enough about them. You know, I think from moment one, people talked about, you lost X, Y, Z, A, B, C, D, E, all those kind of guys you can accomplish, you can't do. And our guys just found a way. Um, you know, we, we lost early in the season in a, in a fashion we definitely never want to lose to. And in the past, I think there have been teams when I've been here where they let a loss to any number of individual teams affect them. And these guys just said, you know what, we're going to buckle down and we're going to go win, we're going to go back to work. Um, you know, uh, winning doesn't define you. How you response, respond to a loss is what defines you as a man and, and, and as a football player. And our seniors were uh, unbelievable. And again, I'm going to read them off in numerical order, and you're going to see a little graphic of each of these guys. Number two, Hayden Pack. Number three, Ryan Baker. Number six, Bryson Cox. Number seven, Chase Humble. Number ten, Ethan Inslee, number 17, Jacob Sanders, number 20, Noah Newman, number 23, Cooper Pardee, number 24, Gavin Ellis, number 25, Colby Ramsey, number 28, Trevor Martin, number 30, Bryce Mantooth, number 33, Logan Akins, number 34, Bailey McQuaig, number 39, Dakota Hickman, number 42, Garrett Threadgill, number 47, Zach Coslow, number 50, Jeb Brooker, number 54, Kaysen Kittle, number 56, Reed Chadwick, Number 62, Adam Long. Number 67, Ethan Rittenhouse. Number 75, Hunter Brooks. Number 82, Callan Neely. What a great group of young men. Um, I'm definitely going to miss them. Uh, they have done so much for our football program to not only continue our tradition, but to grow on it. Uh, I'm, I'm unbelievably thankful for them. Uh, I will always be there for them no matter what. I love them. Uh, the amount of work and the toughness that goes into playing football in general, but to go through this uh, full season and accomplish the things they did, um, I, I am ultra proud of them. Um, until next year, for the year 2020, this is Josh Robinson and the Northwest Bruin Football Show.